What's going on everyone and welcome back to more Black Desert. So I thought today we would have a chill day and do something different. So what we're going to be doing is a little bit of sailing and I, I wanted to talk to you guys about the whole gathering agris thing that came out yesterday. So I did a little bit of testing, um, dump all my agris yesterday and we'll talk about that. So before we do that, hold on, let me figure out what we actually need. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a double barter today. We need octagon, rock, herb, and candle. Basically one of everything. Ooh, we need to get more butterflies. Dude, bartering in this game is like, Dora the Explorer, and he's like, oh, you, what kind of shapes and colors do you need today? Um, okay, so we got two. I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, do we have, we didn't get the, dra <laughs> the dragon. Um, I guess, what, what do you think we need? Well, maybe, what do we have a lot of that will just bring a, another one? We don't need double quartz today. Let's bring another octagon. All right, so. A few people have been asking what the ship skins look like, and I made a video about that a while ago, but this is the Valor skin. And man, I really wish that they would update sailing to be more profitable i guess i know it is kind of an afk activity so they can't make it too profitable but i mean even for people grinding crocs and everything electrons you should be making a lot more silver than you really do or increase the drop rate of everything i think sailing in this game is like it's really calming and i think they did a good job with it overall it's just not profitable that's why uh you don't see really many people doing it. But I think overall the concept is pretty cool. But yeah. So what I wanted to talk about was... One, we got our first compass piece yesterday. And unfortunately, it was a Vodkin one. So I'm happy that we're one out of three. But not the one out of three that we really wanted. So yeah. First compass piece done. Two more to go. I'm still in history of jail forever. But we'll get it one day. And, okay, so I was doing some enhancing yesterday. I even recorded some videos, but I don't think I'll uh, upload it because it was actually pretty awful. I was just frustrated and no one wants to watch that. So, we made basically three 200 stacks. We pushed these to 210, both of them. And, and we have another 130 or 195 and a 131. Basically, we're down like 20 ish billion silver in materials, that is. Yeah, did they change the music in the ocean? I swear I've never heard that before. Oh. that it i've never heard that before oh yeah so yeah we we're talking about gathering mastery so agris can be used for uh as you guys know it was for grinding now that with the recent update they added agris for gathering um so basically on the latest patch notes that we covered the other day it was like how much does it cost to like gather and it's between like 21 and 42 depending on where you're at and um is it worth it is the question i i think it's worth it if you're going to use it like i know there's people that just gather meats and then sell it on the market uh i don't think it's worth it if you're doing that but if you're going to like obviously cook alchemy and whatnot process then i think it's worth it so 
It's a good thing for all the gatherers out there or just uh, life skillers in general. It's about time they made this worth it. Now, if only they it, like added loot scrolls for that as well. Like, I know we have these secret book of florins that give mastery, but I really wish you could use these item scrolls for... I guess... For all the people that have like 1500 plus of them, they just don't grind like that much. Um, one thing I would do was I would change these loot scrolls to ha have two options. Obviously, the timer is still one because you could use both of them at the same time. So I don't want to be like, oh, you could use this for just change it to Agris. Um, I think what they should do is add two options. They would have like obviously your same one hour standard and you could use it that way as usual or each loot scroll gives like 5,000 agris obviously it would be tweaked to seem balanced and they would have to do some testing with that but I think you could use it for agris as well that way it affects life skillers as well and the mastery is good but I think for ba people who are just basic gathering, um, you could have one of two options, a timer or like X amount of aggress. And I think that would be good. Man, it's been a while since I've done any sailing. Is that a player boat? That is a frigate, I think. Don't you just love when people park their boat in the worst spot? Okay, so this is something that you guys probably know as well. When you go to the grocery store and you're like pushing a cart, right? You treat it like you're driving in real life. There's a left lane, there's a right lane. You're getting something in an aisle on the left lane. Or the right lane stay in that one going grocery shopping in the middle of the day like on the weekend or something is probably the worst life activity you could do because <laughs> because you run into so many people that just push their carts in the middle of the aisle and you're like oh you're waiting for them to move and then sometimes they don't even notice you so you have to be like excuse me and then and then they do so Man, grocery shopping, you would think is a fun activity when you're an adult. It's not because it's not even you, it's other people. Also, this might be like, I want to hear your opinion on this one, actually. When you are shopping and like grocery shopping or whatnot, I feel like gamers have better awareness than like your regular person because we're like trained for reaction time it doesn't really even matter what game you play most of them but like when you're pushing a cart and then you like you're about to exit an aisle and then you're going into like an intersection with people crossing all the way i feel like you have the reaction time to this like hard break when some kid is running through the aisle or something whereas other people you can tell. It's just, <laughs> and this is a weird topic, but I just, it's one of those observations I've noticed over the years. Also, have you guys done the third uh, dungeon yet? Well, I don't... Wait, actually, I don't know if the third dungeon is actually out, but I know there's, like, a quest line for, like, the story to do it. And I should probably do that at some point. I don't know what exactly we have to do yet. But I I do want to finish up the Sakraya or Sakrakia one, the second dungeon, basically. Food cron. So yeah, a little bit later, I'll probably be doing some more history of grinding the usual. 
by the way, make sure to get three yellow accessories and three Tungrad accessories before next week. I don't know if it's next week or two weeks from now, but either way, you might want to get them while they're still on the market. Because if you try to do it for next, uh, when the thing comes out, it's probably going to be sold out for a little bit. Maybe like a few days. So if you just want that free APDP, like on day one, you might want to just stock up now. So basically, um, it's going to be a family quest in case you haven't read the... I think it's on a global lab notes or something. But they're going to do another family quest where you get one AP and two DP, I believe. Or one of each. I don't actually know. I just know it's more sheet stats. And so for the DP, you need three yellow accessories from Valencia. Uh, any combination of something. And then for the AP, you're going to need three Tungrads of any... Any combination of the three, you're going to want to get it. So... If you have the silver right now, pick up the three cheapest ones you can, which I think roughly they're all the same right now, except for Tongred rings. I would go for earrings, probably three earrings if you can. And uh, just get those. And then I have my three for the Renaros ring. So basically any three, like Kadri or something, get the three cheapest yellow ones you can. I don't know I don't know if these have to be in Valencia, but I just know you need three yellow accessories and then three congrats for the sheet AP. So it's probably like gonna run you maybe like 600, 600 700 million silver for AP and DP, but that's like the cheapest AP you'll get. I know newer players are like, wow, that's a lot of silver, but then for end game players, that's huge for us. I actually, I think that for me, one DP is probably like 10 to 15 billion silver. And then a one AP gain is probably 30 to 40 billion silver for me. Which is kind of wild to think about, but that's end game in a nutshell. I kind of wish that if I could go back in time and have the same level of enjoyment that I had before while I was making gains like every every other week or something or every week. I definitely would do that. But I feel like BDO is one of those games that you know how World of Warcraft has their classic servers like they're basically the fresh start so people can reminisce on the good old days they had. I feel like BDO is a different game to the point where I don't think I would be able to do a fresh start server like i spent so much time on my character so far that if they were just like yeah we're gonna reset everything i'd probably just quit the game to be honest but that's i don't know i think i'd maybe i'd do it for like a week and just be like hey all the years of knowledge that i've made over time i bet i could progress to an extent before it gets super grindy and you remember how BDO came to console at one point, right? So it's been on PC for a long time, then it came to console. I played it on console for about two weeks, and I got to a certain point. I'm just like, yeah, I used my knowledge of that. It was cool. But at the same time, I feel like I could just be playing on my main and make some more gains. So, yeah, unlike other games where fresh starts aren't, like, as... I, I wouldn't say punishing, but it's like, I don't know. It's just different. Sandbox MMO versus traditionals. I have a video of that. It's a fun, uh, interesting topic you guys could listen to. And, um, yeah, I feel like just this game would not do well on a fresh start. It might be cool for like a week or two, but then you realize the amount of time you actually spent on your first character versus redoing it. Probably not worth the time. I really did think of, at some point, doing, like, um, I don't know, making, a making another account and being, like, a free-to-play series. Not that I really spend that much on my main, but, I don't know, just free-to-play, using the knowledge I've made as a completely new player, what would I actually do? I thought that would have been a cool idea, but then I was just like, 
I'd rather just grind on my main, <laughs> to be honest. Alright, um, let's see. Good barter. Ooh, we should have brought the herb. No! That's a lot of coins. Um, we're gonna have to just refresh it because I'm not coming back. Bro, we got the herb twice. What in the heck? Oh my god. Dang, boys, we took an L. All right, let's see. Are these other two at least good? We got fabric, quartz, and potion. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're not a hundred, but they're not the worst. Oof. We didn't get a good day of barters today. Well, we did, but I just didn't bring the right materials today. What is this scroll? Like five. Oh, okay. Can you put this in your family? Oh god. Oh, you can't even put this in your family inventory. Oh, let's see. AP against monsters. That might be good for something one day. I wonder how many people actually use this to crochet trade vouchers. I think if bartering was worth more, then I'd do it. I think it's fun just to do every now and then, just like, instead of just grinding all day, let's go out into the ocean. And for all of you who are looking to get a Carrick, now is actually a pretty solid time to start picking up materials. Because... Um, this quest right here, or the event where you go fishing for these leaves, you can get Tier of the Oceans and Red Artifacts. And those are actually two huge bottlenecks that people are going to have for going for the Carrick. So, I'll leave a link in the description to my Carrick progression video. And basically that was, um, if you're looking to start your Carrick, this is what I would do and some tips and tricks. So, basically, these two of the oceans are very expensive or very valuable because you need like 40 of them. And they're important because those are the ones where you have to do Margoria dailies. And obviously if you're going for a Carrick, it's doing these ocean dailies is probably going to take you at least an hour a day. Um, so one tip I could give people for doing that is if you're looking to get a Carrick, if you know any friends that do sailing, then you could get the quests and then you, all you have to do is sit on their Carrick and then while they like do all the quest lines, you can still get the credit for it. Or you could do it on your frigate, sailboat, whatever, and it just takes longer, but you could do it solo. Maybe one day I'll actually do this. Maybe like once a week, if I have free time, I'll start taking people through dailies for your carrot gains. So it's one of those things I might do in Discord. So if you want to join it one day, join the Discord. But yeah, basically, it's like a daily, you do it, you get one a day, you need like 40 of them. Kind of tedious, so you might want to actually just start getting those here of the oceans now. <laughs> if you want a Carrick.
Also, would you guys be interested in watching me speedrun Magnus again? I don't really under know why I would do it again, but like if you guys want to, if you guys haven't done it already, I could just speedrun through it on another character. Actually, I might do that on my warrior because I heard warriors get like an extra title for completing it. And um, I think that'd be cool. probably been a while enough that uh we'll see the bugs and stuff are fixed i think i know when i read the patch notes they do fix a lot of the quests and magma stuff and i think for the most part it should be good to go i completed it on day one there were a lot of bugs but it was completable So you guys may be wondering, why do you barter if it's not really profitable? Uh, because it's very easy and there's a Ravinia shop on Lima Island where you can get like 20 memfrags and 20 capra stones for coins that I do like once a week. So I need to uh, fuel my enhancing somehow and capris. Actually, one thing with Capris is I'm very close, or not very close, but I'm at level 16 on my shoes right now, right? And I could go to 17 and get myself another DP, but that's like 3 billion silver. Which, 3 billion for 1 DP is a very good deal for me. But once it comes to, like after I get C20 in my shoes, that's when all the DP just spikes up to like 10... And 15 billion per. I feel like I'm due for a special barter at some point. I can't believe I bartered so much of 10,000. I know there are people with literally six figure exchanges, but <laughs> you just really have to like bartering to do that. I thought it was cool, but I just can't do this every day. If you see the people with like hundreds of thousands of barters unlocked, that's literally all they do, by the way. Barter, unlock everything in the shop using trade vouchers, and you do that every day. Let me actually see in the rankings. What is, uh, oh wow. I always thought the BDO Navy home channel was like Calpheon 6. I remember we used to have a war deck on BDO Navy for like a year. I wish I enjoyed bartering enough to go for Guru 50. I think maybe if they made it more profitable, like doubled the value of all these materials from like five to, I don't know, maybe actually just like multiply it times four. No, actually, if you can make like eight, I think there is a hard cap on how much silver you can make every day just by bartering. And that's like, uh, maybe a billion if you do every refresh on cooldown so but that really does take up a quite a bit of time to the point where you could rather just grind and make a lot more i think people just barter because it's fun You know one thing 
if I were to ever do feedback on sailing stuff, aside from making it more profitable just in general, is I wish you could duel people on your boat. Because that was actually one of the reasons why I got my Valor. And as you guys know, there's four different boats. Volante, Valor, Advance, and Balance. The Valor is the higher damage ship, which is good for making dailies go a lot faster. Or... Um, PvP. And so, back when I got my Karak, I think this was probably like two years ago. I wanted to do some boat PvP with my friends, and this is like, it's gonna be a cool time. We, we do something new in the game. Boat PvP, this sounds fun, right? However, ever since they introduced the naval fame into the game, it's like they basically killed off all boat PvP. So the way it, we did it back in the day was one of my like if let's say two of us are in the same guild right um we one person would merc into another guild and then we would just flag on each other and then if we were in voice comms or something we would just tell each other when our boat was about like 10 percent, so we could repair and everything so we don't sink each other and yeah we just do that practicing boat pvp learning how to maneuver and fire like properly so i think i've had enough practice where i could maneuver and fire pretty well most of the time however it is dead content you like the penalties for being negative naval fame are just very harsh and uh i wish they'd fix that i think just in general though i think being negative karma shouldn't be as Penalizing. Like, I I actually do respect all the people that are full perma red. I feel like this should be a punishment, so just so you can't like go around griefing people all the time. However, I don't think it should be as steep now because back in the day, if you lost anything, you lost like crystals and then your crystals were what, like 1 to 10 mil back in the day. Nowadays, if you lose crystals, you're losing like literally billions of silver, and that's very steep. And then yet alone, if you don't have any crystals, you downgrade gear. And if I downgraded a pen black star, I'd probably just quit the game, to be honest. So yeah, I'm curious to know what your opinions on that are as well. What should be a new set of negative karma rules um i just don't think it should be as steep i think there would be a lot of quality of life changes like if you're a positive karma and die to pve you just don't crystal loss um if you're red you don't let's see hmm. i think if you are red you would still lose xp like your combat xp but no matter how many times you die you would um you would still keep your crystals and everything no downgrades but here's the thing okay so i think that if you are a permanent really red you should have to use a elian's tier if you don't want to lose anything or like xp so just remove crystal loss from the game entirely they have that with light stones. They can implement it with regular crystals. Um, but people who are like positive karma, you just respawn at safe zone. You're good. Or Elian's tier as usual. However, if you're red, you would lose leveling XP. And if you want to prevent that, you would have to use an Elian's tier no matter what. And I think another quality of life is... Let's say, no matter if you're, uh, like, positive karma or negative karma, and if you die to PvE, you know how you lose crystals? I think that should be prevented by using an Elian's tier. Just, that goes across the board for everyone. Because crystals are very expensive these days. And some of them are very hard to get, just in general. 
Well, actually, the only hard crystals to get are the Jin special evasions, so, like... These things? These are very hard to get, and... <laughs> oh, man. I should buy these, actually. Cool. By the way, you guys want to know a secret? If you can't get these Jin ones, if you melt down a wand or bond, you get a material. And you get one of these things, the Fragment of Glory for melting them down. And then if you have like 20 of them, you could make a Jin. Uh, obviously, it's more expensive to do that. But you can guarantee it without RNG. The more you know. Good secrets, right? It's not really a secret. It's just most people don't know it because why would you melt one of those down to test it? All right, so what we're going to be doing now is going to Lima Island. Just in case you guys didn't actually know, there is a shop there that you can buy stuff. And some of it's worth it, some of it isn't. But um, we're basically going for Capris and Memory Fragments. We do this like weekly. Well, I'm glad I have these, just in case. Oh, there's another one that got listed. Eh. I don't need a third one. However, the bad side is I think it costs, like... Almost 2 billion for a gin if you don't want to RNG it. Let me see. I think if you melt a bond, you get two. Alright, we're about to, like, hard science this real quick. Is it alchemy? Okay, you get one. So yeah, it's like two billion for a crystal. Things we do for science. So yeah, 20 of these plus magical shards, black stones. And uh, magic crystal of infinity, evasion. I think there's actually a... The hardest part of this one is really just the essence of nature. I think they're crystal you can buy from the vendor, I believe. But yeah, just in case any of you guys are still using... Um... Wands and wands and you want a gin how you make them I got very lucky and was able to uh, get two of them off the market like uh, right now I've had two gins on order for 
probably about like six months. I got very lucky when they first came out and I got lucky with my orders, but I think for the rest of you. Just buy the bonds and wands and then melt them down to make it. It costs like almost two billion. But the hundred extra AP is definitely worth it. Because uh, your only other way of getting like 100 AP or not AP HP is probably Eye of the Runes rings or something. And that's literally 10 times the amount of silver you would be spending. So I think if you can get your hands on either wands or bonds and then melt them down, you're good. So this is what I do pretty much weekly. I buy the Capris, Memory Fragments, and that. There's no need to buy the ones like the Cronstones. <clears throat> but for all of you wondering how you get Memfrags and Capris once a week, this is how you do it. Is it really worth it in terms of time? Uh, I don't know. It took me like this video is 36 minutes to get 20 of them. You could probably grind that much in the same amount of time, but this was just like zero effort. I was just auto pathing. But yeah, with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow.